Blefelli is a new company that as of this video makes three products. The RX 2.4G wireless audio receiver, the RTX 2.4 gigahertz wireless transmitter, the transmitter can only be purchased with the receiver, and the product I'm reviewing, the B3 DAC. Blefilly sent me the B3 at no charge for my honest review, but I often give companies that send me products free marketing advice that is worth millions of dollars. So here you go. The blah in Blafilly doesn't work. Blafilly doesn't even mean anything. So snobs like myself can't mock people who don't know what the word means. You should rename your company. It's my free advice and you're welcome. Now this part of the video is going to come as a bit of a surprise to new viewers who like to believe that reviewers are gods. But most new DACs hitting the market are transparent. Sure, reviewers will tell you they hear a difference. Like Steve Huff, when in his review of the $2,000 Ever Solo DMP A8 wrote, it was a touch warmer and richer while at the same time not as refined or composed as the much more pricey Daniel Hertz Maria DAC. Not as refined or composed? At which point, in which song or songs, did it lose its composure? The sad fact is that many reviewers feel compelled through either business relations or pure bullshit that they can hear the difference between high quality DACs. Since they aren't me, they can't. And shockingly, the more expensive ones always seem to be a little more refined, have a bit more clarity than the lower cost ones even if that lower cost one is thousands of dollars. More importantly, the fact is that you should not want to hear the difference between DACs. This is my curse, not yours. As long as the DAC is either A, well made and designed, or B, not specifically designed to sound different, they should be transparent to normal human ears. I get that some people don't want to hear the music as it was recorded. Maybe the recording was poorly engineered, without enough bass. Or your room sucks and you need to tame it in one area or another. But you do not want to change the sound signature with a standalone DAC. The number of people who ask me for my recommendation on a warmer sounding DAC makes me sad. You fix the sound signature with either EQ and room correction at the latest stage possible. Because no matter how you think you like music to sound, there is one product that will never be perfected, the speaker. And while there are a great many excellent speakers, none are perfect in every room and every situation. This is the stage where you want to fix the sound as close to the speakers or headphone output as possible. You don't fix sound in your streamer or in your phono stage, not in your amplifier and definitely not in your DAC. The goal is perfect reproduction at every stage. That should be the only goal for each stage of sound production. Fixing the sound should happen either right before or after the amplifier stage, unless you own the RME ADI-2 FS DAC amp. Then you should fix it because the next stage is your headphone output. So with DACs getting so good that you can't tell the better ones apart, what you're looking for is features, price, and if you have the extra dough, audiophile design. When I review a DAC, I'm first listening for complete transparency, and unlike the Fio K11, that's what I got with the Pofility B3. Of course, there are $15 dongles that can get you complete transparency. So now the question is, what are you getting for $149? The price Blefilly is asking for, for the B3. You're getting a plastic case. It's not ugly. The video from the Blefilly makes the B3 look absolutely gorgeous, but in person, it doesn't look that nice. In fact, it's nowhere as nice as the Fio K11 for $129. But the K11's filters were flawed, so it essentially fails its purpose unless you turn off those filters. And even then, I can't be sure the issues I heard were still with the DAC or the headphone amplifier. But as I said in that video, it's very hard to hear problems with the K11 sans the filters without critically listening. Like a dongle, the B3's only power source is a USB input. 
For a desktop setup, this is great. No extra power source required. It also has a Bluetooth receiver, which a dongle does not. So it's very convenient to connect wirelessly to it. I had no issues using my Android Pixel 5a. Unfortunately, the only input is the USB-C, which doubles as power. So for use as a standalone DAC in a stereo setup, where you might have a standalone streamer, that most likely rules the Blafilly B3 out for you completely. Only if you want to specifically use it as a Bluetooth transmitter in a stereo only standalone setup would this work for you. Everything else on the back of this unit is an output. Balanced RCAA, coax, and optical. So 99% of you will probably only use the B3 in a computer desktop system. The other 1% of you are complete and utter idiots. The front interface is dirt simple. You really gotta love the black on black lettering, but since there's only one button, you shouldn't get confused with anything. I did get confused, but that was after two bottles of Camus Cabernet Sauvignon Napa Valley 2020. Just finding the little bug of a button got really hard. Now the MFB button has one wonderful feature. I wish more products had. The double tap. Double tapping the MFB button makes the B3 forget the Bluetooth connection and switch back to the USB. I don't enjoy my phone being used by a product, forcing me to go to settings, to disconnect it in my phone, which might not be in the same room, just to be able to listen to my headphones. With the facility, I just double tap and I'm good to go. Hold down the MFB button for three seconds to turn it off or on. The front interface does not have a brightness adjustment. It looks very bright in a photo or video because the camera is compensating. Ooh. But it's actually quite dull. And while I personally like the brightness level, I could see some people either wanting it completely off or brighter if the sun is directly shining on it through a window. The Bluetooth indicator stays on all the time, regardless if something is connected to it or not. To really know if the Bluetooth is being used, you are looking to see if the US indicator is on, USB indicator is on. If it says LDAC when my phone was connected, then you've got a Bluetooth connection. Even if you are connected on your phone, if you shut down the app on your phone that's making sound, the B3 will automatically go back to the USB connection. So if you just crank the volume because my video was recorded to 50 dB too low while watching on your phone, then you swipe off the YouTube app, be ready for a very, very unpleasant surprise if you're playing something on your computer. The second row on the display always says Blafilly B3, and the third row will indicate the sampling rate. The little lights that bounce around don't indicate anything. They just do the same thing even if no sound is present. So how does it sound? Clean uncolored, transparent, exactly what you want in a DAC. But as I said earlier, 90% of DACs, even dongles, can do the same. So now we get to the rating. And transparent is transparent. It doesn't matter if it's a $15 dongle or a $13,000 Daniel Hertz DAC. But versatility has value, and the Bofilly fills a specific niche. Desktop DAC with Bluetooth. So what rating does it get for $149? Our infinite rating scale pegs this as a Guinness extra stout with a medium rare cheddar cheeseburger with lettuce and tomato, but it doesn't earn sauteed onions or mushrooms. And the cheddar would be Kraft, not Wyke Farms, but also not store brand. Sometimes I wonder why I even bother with the rating system when nearly all of you probably knew the rating before I even got to this part. For what you're getting, the Blafilly B3 is $10 more than the Topping D10 Balance desktop DAC, but the Topping doesn't have a Bluetooth. While the Blafilly is $20 less than the SMSL D6, which gives you a remote, both optical and coaxial in, on top of USB and Bluetooth, the SMSL not only looks better, it has the versatility to be used in a stereo setup sans a computer. In my opinion, the Blafilly B3 is just too pricey for what you're getting, which makes the topping D10 way overpriced. So hit that subscribe and notification button because we're testing the Fio K9 DAC amp, the Duke Audio U3 headphone amp, and what many in the world consider the most controversial headphones in history, the Verum 1 Planars. Plus, 
the war and audiophiles continues. So news updates will continue until we end anti-audiophilia forever. Thank you for watching this edition of The Scientific Audiophile. We'll see you next time.